Okay, welcome back to Strength Coach Tutorials. And on today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use the average, max, and minif functions to pull out some interesting data with your athlete monitoring data, as well as how to use slicers with your tables, and then how to have this um, chart at the top here that'll automatically update with your athlete monitoring scores depending on what name you select on the slicer. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're here with um, a blank sheet that has a bunch of the data on it that we're going to use um, for our, our athlete monitoring kind of um, averages, maxes, and min values that we're going to be creating here. But a couple of quick updates about Strength Coach Tutorials for the month of August. Um, number one is I'm going to try to be putting out two videos per week, um, either Sunday night or Monday and Wednesday. So keep an eye out for the videos Sundays. Sunday, Monday, and Wednesday um, for Strength Coach Tutorials. And I'm gonna be trying to put out two videos a week for everyone so that they can kind of stay up to date with everything that's going on. And then number two is um, on my Twitter and also I will post a link to this in the description below. I've just created a Google form where if you have an idea for a future episode of Strength Coach Tutorials, you can kind of submit your um, idea. So you can put in your name, um, what kind of coach you are, your email, and then describe the idea or the sheet that you want to create. And then if there's any photos or um, pictures or diagrams that you have that might help me kind of figure out what it is you're looking for, um, you can put those or you can um, attach a file there. And what I'm going to do is if I use your idea for an episode of Strength Coach Tutorials, I will send you the sheet for free. So um, I will email you the sheet as soon as it's completed and you will have that sheet for free that you can use um, with your athletes or whoever it is you're working with. So it's a win-win situation. Um, I get some more ideas of things that I can use to make videos to help coaches um, and help coaches specifically and you get um, a sheet that is hopefully going to solve a problem that you might be having. So that's the second update. So without further ado, back to our worksheet here. So all I've got here is um, we're going from basically January 1st to January 15th and it really doesn't matter the length of data. This, um, these tricks are still going to work. And I have two separate athletes, um, Dave and Jeff, and they have January 1st to January 15th um, monitoring data. So this is just based on a very simple type monitoring questionnaire. The questions are really irrelevant, but I've just got stress, sleep, mood, and will and will just stands for willingness to train and it's a one to five scale, one being um, not very good and five being kind of the best they've ever kind of um, had. So all I've done here is I've randomly generated some data, but I'm gonna take you through how to do that quickly so that if you wanna start to make some of these sheets to play around with some, some fake data before you actually have all the data from your athletes, there's a really easy way to start making up data. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete all this data out. And in the first cell up here, I'm just gonna use a function called rand between. I'm gonna type equals rand between and then open the brackets and it's gonna ask me what's the bottom number. In this case, it's gonna be the number one is the lowest value we wanna look for. And then comma, what's the top number? And in this case, it's gonna be the number five. And then I can close that off and it's gonna give me a number between one and five. And if I drag that over, um, all the way to will and then drag it all the way down it's gonna fill in all those values with the numbers between 1 and 5 now the only tricky thing about this formula is anytime I kind of do something in Excel um, those f those numbers are all gonna update so I actually want them to stay static I don't really want them updating every time I type something into Excel so I'm just gonna copy all of those cells control C and then I'm gonna right click paste and there's an option to paste only the values and I'll hit that. And now all of those cells just become numbers. They don't become that ran between formula. So that's one way to kind of just create some dummy values and you can kind of use that however you want. Um, but I find it really powerful if I just wanna to start to create some data and play around with some different charts and things. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is this is just personal preference, but I'm gonna change the date format. I have them set up just a short date here, but just to remind you how to do that, you can go to um, up here to the top to number and then go to more number formats, custom. And I like um, year, month, date. So I'm gonna type in Y, 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 Y. 
mm and dd and that's going to give me the formula 2020-01-01 and it just makes it a lot easier when i'm organizing my data um, that everything kind of goes in order and then in true spreadsheet organization you would actually reformat this as a text um, but i'm not going to do that for this file we're just going to leave it like this and then the last piece that I want to do is actually turn this into a table and that's going to give me a few extra functions when I go to use these formulas. So I'm going to select all of the area that I want to turn into a table. I'm going to put format as table and I'm going to pick this one because I like the way that it looks. My values or my, um, my headers have or my table has headers and I'm just going to kind of crop these down a little bit. So um, it makes those cells a little bit smaller. So there you go, that's all our data sort of organized. And then I like stuff in the center of my tables as opposed to at one side. So if I go up to the top left here and click, there's an option to select all of the table values. And I'm just gonna um, justify it to the center. And that looks pretty good to me. So what I said I was gonna show you how to do was how to create a running average, a running max, and a running minimum value. The first thing we're going to want to do is actually total up these values because typically when you're looking at athlete monitoring scores, you're looking probably at a total value of the score for the day. So an easy way to do that is I'm just going to type in this first box here equals sum and open those brackets and I'm just going to select the three cells that I want to be summed. But if you notice, because I'm working in a table, it's actually giving me table two at stress one to five to will one to five. The at means this specific row. Okay, so keep that in mind because we're gonna be using that a bunch. And for the table values, you can see that it's um, open square brackets, open square brackets, and um, double dots to the other set of, or to the other column. So when I type that in, it's gonna give me the sum of this row. And then if I go down one, it's gonna give me the sum of this row and so on and so forth. And that's because we used that at um, stress and that refers to that specific row. Okay, so that's gonna become really important when we go to move on to these running kind of averages. So we have the total now and basically what we wanna do is in the first row we wanna average the first one, in the second row we wanna average um, the first two, in the third row, we want to average the first three and so on and so forth all the way down the table. But we only want to average Dave's values and we only want to average Jeff's values, okay? So what we have to do is create a formula where it's gonna take an average of um, this row or all the rows above it only if it's equal to Dave or only if they're equal to Jeff's. So the formula I want to use is called average ifs. And what I'm gonna do is in this box, I'm gonna type um, up in the formula bar, I'm gonna type equals average ifs. And the reason I'm typing it up in the formula box and not right in the cell, because when I go to do some of these cell references, I don't want it to go over top of where I'm trying to reference. So the first thing I'm gonna, it's gonna ask me for is what's the range that I actually want to average? And I wanna average the total, so I'm gonna select total, okay? and I want the total all the way up to the specific row. So the way that I do that, if, if I select the top total and then double dots all the way to the row that I'm actually looking for. And then I'm gonna hit comma and then it's gonna ask me what's the criteria range and I'm gonna do the same thing, but I want to make the criteria athlete name this time. So I select the top header for the athlete name box and then I'm gonna put um, double dots and go all the way to that same row. Okay, let me just do that one more time. So I select there, double dots, athlete row. And then it's gonna ask me what's the criteria that I actually want. And what I want is it to match this name in this row. So I'm gonna select that cell. And then when I close that off, what it's telling it is that I want the average of the total range all the way up to the current row if the header range um, all the way up to the current row is equal to the name in the first cell, okay? Or the first sort of column here. And then when I hit enter, it's gonna give me all of the averages um, up to that. And we can tell that this is working because the first one is gonna match, it's only averaging one value. 
And if we were to look at this, the average of 16 and 14 would be 15. And then if we go all the way down to Jeff, um, we have 11 and then the average of nine and 11 would be 10. So we can tell that this is giving us accurate values. But the only other thing that I wanna fix here is these numbers are like, there's too many decimal places here. So I can take that down a little bit. And the easy way to do that is if I just select this whole column, I can either drag or I can go to the top here and click, uh, click the down arrow. And I can use these um, functions up here right under the number function. And I wanna actually decrease the decimal and let's take it all the way down to one decimal. Okay, so we got 14.0, 15.0, 14.3, 12.5, et cetera. So that's how you would get a running average. And what it's doing is just averaging each value um, based on the amount of, or based on the total wellness score of all the scores for Dave or for Jeff. Now, the reason that I chose to use the average ifs function, even though there was only one criteria, is because now I can actually just copy this function. So I'm gonna copy the whole thing and I'm gonna paste it under max ifs, v, and I'm just gonna take the average and change it to max. And there is a max ifs function and it's set up the exact same way, but now it's just gonna take the max value. No, that should work. Oh, that's why, because I got um, a bracket caught at the beginning here. So let's just go max ifs, go to the end and hit enter. And what you can see is it's giving me the max value up to that date. So it's not gonna change a whole lot because we've had a 16 um, early. So there's a 16 and it really hasn't gone any higher than 16 until the last day it went to 17. And the same thing for Jeff, you can see that the max only changes when the actual total max changes. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna control C, um, sorry. I'm gonna copy this formula, control C, and then I'm gonna paste it under running min, and I'm gonna change this max to a min, and hit enter. And now what it's gonna do is give me the minimum value that that athlete has ever had. And this might be useful if we wanted to have sort of a max line and a min line, and see if this specific athlete's values was somewhere in the middle there, or if they're at the max or the min that they've ever been. This might be really useful for something like vertical jumps, or um, sprint times or, or something kind of to that effect. Now, now that we have these values, we're gonna actually put um, a slicer on this table so that we can look at either one easily. When you're in a table, we can filter values really easily. I can just select the arrow by any one of these um, top headings and I can select which athlete I actually wanna look at and it'll filter out all of those values. So I'm gonna hit select all. But what I'm gonna use is a slicer, which is something I haven't used in any of my videos yet, which what it does is um, it just creates that filter, but it just puts it in a little box on the side where we can um, select more easily. So it's more readily available. So from what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to insert and there should be an option for slicer. And what it's gonna ask me is what I actually want to slice. So in this case, we want athlete name and when I hit okay, it's gonna give me this box and I can select sort of what athlete I wanna look at and it's gonna automatically pull out their values and then if I wanna select all of them, I can just clear the filter and it'll bring everything back. Now, what's interesting to note is that when I'm actually selecting it, what it's doing is basically hiding the other rows for the ones that it doesn't have values. So for example, I'll show you what I mean by this. I'm gonna clear it. If I were to put a value here, and then I select Jeff, so it's gonna hide all of Dave's rows. It's gonna hide that value um, that I just typed in there. So if we wanna actually show things, that's probably not the best place to put them is on the right side of a table that uses a slicer. So I'll delete that and kinda of come back here, and I'm just gonna change the color of this slicer to match the actual table. And the next thing I wanna do is create a graph, okay? So I wanna create a graph out of the total, the running average, the running max, and the running min. So I'm gonna select the um, columns that I wanna create this graph out of. So to do that, I click the down arrow up at the top of the chart, and I'm gonna hold control because I want um, total and average and max and min but you can see I messed that up. I accidentally clicked, so it's taking this whole column. So let's try that one more time. So we're gonna go um, date and total 
running average, max, and min. And when I go to insert, um, I'm gonna put recommended charts. It's really not gonna know what to do with that. I actually want a line chart. So I'm gonna select line chart, and you can see this chart looks kind of funky. So I'm gonna hit okay. And we're gonna take this chart over here, but because if I were to select these values, the chart could either disappear or come back. I'm gonna actually create a row above all this and put the chart there. So we're gonna put our chart up at the top here. Whoops, I'm gonna put our chart up at the top. I'm gonna to stretch that out so that it follows all here and we'll put it in sort of row one. Let's make row one a little bit bigger. I'll bring this over just a little bit, up a bit. Okay, so I'm gonna delete the chart title because that'll give it a little bit more room and I'll make this a little bit bigger that way. Actually, let's give it a little bit more space. Okay, so what you're gonna see is as I select the different athletes, the chart's actually gonna change. So let's clear the filter. So there's a couple things I wanna do to this chart to make it a little bit more useful. I don't know if we need this legend here, but we'll change it in a second if we do. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna actually have a, a maximum value on the side here. So if I um, double click there, it's gonna give me the option to add a maximum value. So I'm gonna make it 20. Okay, so we have that done. Um, now what I wanna do is I actually wanna change these lines a little bit. So this blue one in the middle is gonna to correspond to total and you'll notice when I select it, it actually highlights the data that it corresponds to. If I right click here, I'm gonna change what kind of chart that actually is. So you can see we have series one and we're gonna change that to a bar chart. So it's gonna be bars that kind of sits right in the middle of our chart here. And then the maximum value, which is this green, um, or sorry, this, um, gray line, we actually wanna make that green so I can go up here to format and shape outline with green. And the bottom value, which is the min, we're gonna make that red. And then the middle value, let's make it yellow. Just cause that gives us a little bit of a look at this. And you can see now when I select the different athletes, it's gonna change their chart based on, the, based on their value. So, why this might be useful is you can see basically where their average is in the middle with the yellow, but you can see with the green and the red where their max or their min values is. So you can see on 2020-01-05, this athlete had their minimum value and that's changed what their minimum is all time. Now you could do this with any calculations that you want, but this just gives you an easy way to start to visualize where an athlete's at with their uh, monitoring data. It's kind of like monitoring on a budget. So. That's how you can create an easy chart with a slicer and we could easily copy these and paste these to another sheet if we wanted it all at one sheet. Um, but that is sort of a, a quick monitoring chart that you can use for your athletes using the average max and min if functions. So thanks for watching. Don't forget if you have an idea for a video, please fill out the survey that's gonna be in the description or on my Twitter. Um, and then I, like I said, if I end up making that video you will get the sheet for free. I will send it to you. And the other thing is, is please check back twice a week because I'm gonna to try to be putting out videos twice a week, at least for the month of August, um, as one last push before we kind of go back to school in September. And if you wanna keep up with everything I've got going on, feel free to follow me on uh, Facebook, Instagram, or um, Twitter, at DSM Strength. And then I also have some of these sheets for sale on my website. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.